Hi, I'm Troy Bailey and welcome to the Comic Book Movie Collector's Guide, the show about collecting all things superhero cinema. And today we are looking at the 1984 Supergirl movie. So let's get into it. Supergirl is a live-action superhero film with a runtime of 124 minutes. The film was released into theatres in the UK on the 19th of July 1984 and in the United States on the 21st of November 1984. It was first released on DVD in 2000 by Anchor Bay Entertainment and then later reissued on the 17th of July 2018 by Warner Brothers Entertainment under the Warner's Archive Collection on DVD and Blu-ray with no 4K HD release as of this video. It was directed by Janai Schwartz and was written by David Odell with the film being produced by Artistry Limited and distributed by TriStar Pictures. It is the fourth instalment in the Superman film series set after the events of Superman 3 and serving as a spin-off of the series, but it failed to impress critics and audiences alike. The film's failure ultimately killed any chance of a sequel and led producers Alexander and Iliad Sulkin to sell the Superman film rights to the Canon Group in 1986. The plot of the film has Kara Zor-El, Superman's cousin, accidentally losing a powerful orb called the Omega Hedron and comes to Earth as her alter ego Supergirl to retrieve it, but instead finds herself up against a wicked witch Selena who is using its power for her evil plans. Okay, the disc in case. So today we are looking at the limited edition one that I've got here. Uh, I also picked this one up earlier on, which come out at the same time. This is the original single disc version. Uh, I got that one years ago, but I uh, only managed to pick this one up just recently uh, and thought I'd do a review on this one. Now this is a limited copy to 50,000 copies so not a real easy one to get a hold of and I do I don't mind the whole black aesthetic there uh, and then you've got the spine there it's not too bad and on the back not too bad nothing too spectacular very similar to the other one uh, but also has its number which I have 48,286 a little high on there, but you know, at least I've got one of the 50,000, so I'm happy with that. And then, of course, on the inside, you have the original disc, which is in that single disc one, and you also have the special disc with the director's cut on it. And you also get this nice little booklet, I'll just pop that there, which has all the cast intros, bits about the movie. And I poster, I also love this. It also has like promotional stuff that it gave out back in the day, coloring competitions and books and stuff. I thought that was really neat. Um, overall, I really like this a lot. This special edition is really good. It looks great, has a lot of great stuff in it. So that's why I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. Okay, the script and story. So what can I say about this story and this script? Holy Jesus. Uh, it was like a hot mess and a cluster f had a baby and it grew up to be the Supergirl script. Uh, this story just made no sense and has more plot holes than a block of Swiss cheese. It really does. But after doing some research, I found out why it's so bad. So uh, this was meant to have Christopher Reeves in it. Uh, to be in the movie, but he pulled out because I think he read the script and he saw how bad it was So he pulled out not long before the, it was going to get shot. So they had to rewrite it on the fly uh, To take him out of it and that just did not make things any better. I'm guessing uh, I'm not going to spend an hour pointing out all the errors in the script Trust me There is enough videos out there on YouTube that do do that in great detail So go check them out if you want to do a deep dive uh, but here, I'm just going to say that the movie is just so let down by the script at times. It just it, it just makes it so hard to watch. It really does. So with that, I am only going to give this a 2 out of 30. 
from page to screen. So now as far as adapting Supergirl from the comics to the big screen, uh, they did get it mostly right with uh, some minor changes for the script. And as far as her costume goes, it was pretty much in line with the Superman movies uh, as this was meant to be a spin-off for the franchise. But that's pretty much where it ends as the villain uh, of the movie, Selena the Witch, uh, she was just made up for the movies and uh, she was a weak villain at best for Supergirl who would have... She wouldn't even have cracked a sweat to take her out. But again, that's where it comes back to just a very poor script. Now, as far as the actors go, well, let's just say it was very 80s in their acting. Uh, it is very much a movie of its time. But Helen Slater as Supergirl was okay. But I think she she would have been good if the movie, you know, if it wasn't let down by its script and its director. Um, they made her come off looking like a two-year-old who was just lost as opposed to this enlightened being from another planet who's like inquisitive about this new world that she's landed in. But there's also, you can't go past one thing there and that's the performances of Faye Dunaway as Selena and Peter O'Toole as Zolta. Holy Jesus, they were swinging for the fences and uh, they added some comedic value where it really wasn't supposed to be, I'll tell you that right now. So uh, with that, uh, I can only give this a 4 out of 20. Special features. Now in this you get two versions of the uh, movie. You get the 124 minute international version of it and you also get the 138 minute director's cut. You also get a 16 page full colour booklet about the movie and you also get an audio commentary with director Jano Swartz and Scott Michael Bosco. You get the making of Supergirl featurette, US and foreign trailers, US TV spots, original storyboards, stills and posters gallery, and talent bios. So you get a lot of special features in this, uh, especially in this limited edition version. Um, you know, it has some great insights into the making and production of this film. So with that, I am going to give this an 8 out of 10. Critics review. Now, the critic score came in at 9% and the audience score was 26%. Holy crap. That is a bad score, but warranted nonetheless. And if you do a search on YouTube, critics pretty much across the board had the same opinion. Uh, this movie really stank. Are you Tony Stank? <laughs> Anyway, if we round it up, we get a score of 2 out of 10. Okay, my review. Now, I remember this when it came out when I was a kid, and uh, I thought it was okay at the time, but re-watching this as an adult some 30, <coughs> 30 plus years later, um, my God, what, what was I thinking? I don't know. But I really did think this movie was better than it was in my head. Um, and I think this movie really showcases what superhero movies were like in the early days. They, uh, they just thought this stuff was for kids. So, um, you know, because no adults are going to watch this sort of stuff. So they could put up anything they want up on the screen and, oh, they'll love it. But, um, you know, things are great nowadays, which is good. But it was a bit of a rough time back then for superheroes up on screen. And this was just a movie just trying to capitalise on the success of the Superman franchise that was out at the time, which was very popular, by the way. And at the time, uh, they could like, I mean, they could have done better. You know, it could have been so much more, but they just needed a decent script and a director who knew what he was doing. Now, if you're lucky enough to have the limited release I've got with both versions, I definitely recommend the director's cut as it has a few more scenes that help sort of explain a bit more and flesh it out a bit more of the story uh, as the normal version just misses a few things that, that would have helped this movie in a sense. But in saying that, this movie needs more than a few extra scenes to help this tire fire of a movie, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but anyway, so I'm afraid I'm going to give it the dismal score of... 3 out of 20. Okay, final thoughts. So first up, if we look at the collectability scale, this one would be sitting at your completest collector like myself, or 
maybe a very big Superman fan as no one else really wants this in their collection as there is really no re with watch value here at all. Uh, so this one is really just for your serious collector. Now as far as availability goes, uh, for the limited edition one, very rare. There's only 50,000 copies out there and in my time for looking for it, I've only ever seen four copies for sale over the last few years, so you will really have to do some searching to find one. But if you just want to go with your standard edition, that's more on the common side of things. Not hard to find in any of your retail outlets or online. Now, as far as your average price goes, for the limited edition, you're looking at anywhere between $50 to $85 on DVD. There is no Blu-ray and there is no 4K. But if you want a standard copy, you're looking at anywhere between $10 to $25 on DVD and, of course, $15 to $40 on Blu-ray with no 4K as yet. Now, for the final score, we get a grand total of 28 out of 100. That is a bad score for a movie. Oh, that's terrible. It was just made to cash in and it really didn't do anything for the titular character at all, which is really a shame. Uh, anyway, look, do yourself a favor, give this one the hard pass and maybe just go watch the Supergirl TV show. That's a lot better than this, that's for sure. Now I am really upset. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, why not hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons as it really helps the channel out. And I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much to all of those of you who already have. Now, also, let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this movie and what's wrong with you if you did. <laughs> or if you're lucky enough to have that limited edition version in your collection. Uh, also, if you would like to request a review or see something on the channel, don't forget you can email me at thecomicbookmoviecollector at gmail.com or you can just hit me up on the socials at comicbookmoviecollector on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. All the links will be down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.